Hey everyone, welcome to this new tutorial. I'm really excited to make this tutorial as I just know you will be able to learn something and move from this boring scene to this awesome scene which you can customize however you like and really level up the visuals of your game. This tutorial will be split into two parts to make things much easier. In the first video, so this video, we will focus mostly on setting up the universal render pipeline. Some troubleshooting in case things don't work, as I personally had some trouble with some things, and I will also show you how I fix those. And we will also be improving some of our settings to really make our scene look better already, and mostly enhance the performance of our scene. In the second part, we will be making the scene I showed earlier. We will be using post-processing and some other really cool techniques to really make our scene look at least 10 times better. I will also explain what most of the settings do and how you can make your own perfect scene. And this will be all explained in less than 20 minutes. I do heavily recommend you to follow through this video first before jumping into the second part. Otherwise you will probably miss some important stuff and things won't work as intended when you are following along in the second part. Before we jump right into this video, I want to give a quick thanks to Ton Heat Game Dev for suggesting this video. He also has his own YouTube channel so definitely check it out. Alright everyone, let's get right into it. Just like always, feedback is really appreciated in the comment section down below and suggestions for our upcoming tutorials are also really welcome. First thing what I'll be doing is I'll make a new project. You can follow along with your existing project, you don't have to start over. When you go actually to create a Unity project, you can see that there is a high definition render pipeline and this will basically set up everything for you. But for this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to do this uh, manually. So basically when you have a, a scene or a game with the 3D render template, then you are still able to follow along. So I'll just open the 3D one and I'll call it tutorial. Of course, you can call it whatever you like. I'll click create and wait till it's created. All right, we are now in the Unity scene. We are in the tutorial scene. But what you instantly see is Unity 2.19.2.13. This is my default um, setup. Basically, when I set up Unity, it also goes to 2019. But there's a problem with it because in the package manager, you can't find the universal pi render pipeline. It is available on GitHub, but because I always have 2.19. On default I won't be able to find universal render pipeline so if you can't find your package make sure to check if you're on unity 2019 and if you're not you can always go back to your to your uh, to your unity hub and you'll basically have to update your tutorial scene um, it is also important to note that when you upgrade something that you have to have the instant the installed already added to your unity and make sure to also back up your project especially if you are already working on an existing project that uses packages because upgrading could actually completely destroy all of your work but in my case i have a normal thing so a normal game without anything inside so i can just go up i'm going to use 2020.1.6 and I'll update it and once again it will take some time to load but we'll just speed through that with the power of editing magic. Alright we're now into Unity and like you see the package manager is right here. Um, if you do not have the package manager by default you can always go to window um, pack and add press package manager and this will create will find the package manager right now I'll still won't be able to find universal render pipeline because my packages are on all the packages in the project but we want to do all packages in unity registry so I'll just uni 
I'll search universal and you can see universal render pipeline. I'll install it and I will also install an asset pack I got from for free on the asset store. The link to the asset pack is in the description and I'll be using this to test out my different scenes and all different kind of stuff where we will be doing with the universal render pipeline. All right, we got it. Um, now I'll be going to my assets for the asset pack. Um, you can find it on the on the Unity Asset Store, um, and then you will basically go to my assets in here, and you will go to low poly. Uh, I mean, because that's the asset, and I'm going to click import. I can choose which one I want, but I'll just import everything for sake of this video. It's much quicker, <laughs> and. I think it's already imported, look at that. Um, I'll go to demos and I will click demo tree. And this will be the place where we'll be working. I'll zoom in onto the camera and right now nothing has happened yet. So the universal render pipeline is, isn't doing anything yet. The first step we'll be doing to get this ready is we will go to create um, unif rendering universal render pipeline and then pipeline asset and I'll just click enter because it doesn't matter what name I give it and currently we have our settings menu but if I change this this is an obvious change you will definitely be able to see this but right now you can't see it why is that because it's still not added to your project we can set it by going to project settings and drag and drop the scriptable object in here and everything turns pink that's also really simple why this is this is because currently the the materials used for these objects are still on the standard shader and we want to use the universal render pipeline shader we can simply fix this by going to a render pipeline universal render pipeline and upgrade project materials to universal RP materials and if we click this everything is fixed and it also adds some nice fog and now you can finally see the universal render pipeline doing its work now we will be going over some optimization features within the render pipeline and in the next video will be actually making our scene look much more beautiful but currently I'm just going to give show you the main settings you need to know to get started and really get your assets how you want them and uh, especially enhanced performance. So we will first go to this quality and it has some HDR, anti-aliasing and render scale. Honestly, these two don't really matter in my opinion. HDR will basically make things much clearer. But like you see, if I press this, nothing happens at all but what you can actually see is the render scale so i'll just drag this down for now and you can see that everything becomes blurry and if i go to back to one and then i'll go to two you see almost no change but that's of course the level of quality you'll give it so if i zoom in on this tree for now because you really have to zoom in very deeply to actually see a difference and if I go to 2 now, you can see that things get much smoother and much blurrier. So depending on how detailed you need things, you can get this up and down. I'll keep it on 1 because honestly, I'll never get this close up to a tree for example. A second, we have the lightning. And it has also, you can choose disabled or per pixel. Of course, disabled will basically be that you have your lights and it will always be as light but we'll, we'll, we'll of course be using light so I'll use per pixel and this will basically calculate for each pixel um, the light uh, you can of course disable cast shadows for no shadows you can add resolution but 248 is fine if you go lower you can see a difference but if you can go higher you almost see like no difference and then we have additional light and this is a pretty nice one so let's say we want to add light so i'll just add two lights like this i'll i'll do this one to the right and like you see right now we have a lot of lights we can we can 
choose to have how many lights can each pixel have. So if I put this on zero, only the, this light will work. So no additional lights will influence. If I put this, of course, to one, one light will be influencing it. And if you um, put it to two, of course, the third light, or like actually the second additional light starts shining. So you can basically choose how many lights can influence one object to actually one pixel. You can, of course, add shadows, but honestly, this feature never really worked for me. Like if I enable and disable cast shadows, it, shadows never come in. So maybe there's like a feature turned off here where there's like, no, everything is on. I've no clue why this not, doesn't work actually. But we'll just keep it on one light for the sake of this video. Then we have shadows and shadows is a pretty important one. Shadows can give a lot of lag to your work. And this is because it has to render from, it, it has to t shoot rays. It's not like us RTX, high RTX on graphics, but it's light still needs to cast rays towards the trees to actually calculate shadows. So this can actually take a lot of performance. And how can we uh, enhance that so it doesn't take too much performance? We can basically set a distance from the camera. And you see, if I put this lower, it will basically only go take 6.7 unity chunks of um, shadows because th that's the distance I give it. So I'll tell it to calculate as far as I can see. Because if I tell it to calculate everything, the game will be really laggy for no reason. So we I'll check, like you can see in the distance, you can see where the shadow is. So I'll say, yeah, I'm going to go 55. So right now we have uh, 55 length of shadows. I can of course turn this further if I have long distances of view or lo lower if I'm, for example, walking around in a dungeon. Then we have cascades and this is also a really important one to enhance performance because cascades will change the quality based on how far the shadow is away from you. Uh, if I show, if I go like very to the left this basically means that the shadows these shadows are not close enough to be high quality but if i put it up you can see that like more quality will be added to the, all the shadows and you have to like look what is the sweet spot because of course in the distance you won't see as much detail as in the front and this also this has also four cascades to really go in depth and I'll just go like this and you'll see that I have much more detail right now. And there's just a smooth transition between the different levels of detail. And there's still a massive performance boost. You also have that bias and normal bias, but I actually don't use that. It's like it calculates how deep the shadow is like going, I assume, based on um, the trees. Like, for example, like if you go... If you go over here at the stone, you can basically see how it it goes, like how 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 hard the shadows are being calculated. It's very hard to explain, but I'm just keeping it on one because it gives me the best results. And then we have the soft shadows, and soft shadows will basically soften out your shadows, enhancing perform no, enhancing the looks of your shadows without really hitting your performance too much. So if you see this. You can see that it gets a little bit softer. It's really hard to see, but you, you notice that like this, it's a little bit more blurry, especially at long ranges. You you can't see like you can't really see a lot of difference, but it's get it gets softer. So if you feel like you need this, you can definitely add it. Then we have post processing, and honestly, we are not gonna be using this. But if we put HDR on, you need HDR on, you can have a high level of dynamic range. But like you see, there, is, there isn't really a lot of difference. You can't see it at all. This is more for the advanced people, which isn't really for this tutorial. So I'm just going to put, keep it on 32 and low dynamic range. And then we have advanced. And I heavily recommend you to look into this um, on, on the documentation, which I also linked in the description down below. But this will basically um, base the render 
the way of rendering on the material. So I, if I recall correctly, di dynamic batching will basically um, take, if there's a lot of the same materials, like I have a lot of trees, they're all using the same tree color, they will all be rendered together, enhancing performance once more. So I'll keep this mixed lighting as of course if it wants to mix light and yeah debugging for debugging purposes which isn't really for us. And yeah guys that's all um, this is the first part of my two episode series on the universal render pipeline and the next episode will be going much more in depth we'll actually be making very cool stuff very cool scenes so yeah thanks for watching guys in two days the the video will be coming out on the on post processing using the universal render pipeline. If you like this video, definitely give it a like. If you're new here, please subscribe. It really helps me out in the channel. And of course, suggestions and feedback on how I make tutorials and what I should make next. I highly appreciate it in the comment section down below. So yeah, bye everyone. Thanks for watching.